Hey guys, this is just a quick tutorial on opening a new file in Photopea, working with tools and layers, and then saving your project at the end of the day. So right now I am in Photopea.com and this box will pull up. We really like Photopea because it's so similar to Photoshop, but it's free and it's accessible online for us so we can work on it in class on our Chromebooks. So right now the first thing I'm going to do is click on New Project and this box appears. The first thing you want to do to do is name your project. I already have mine named Photo P Demo. Then you can also change the dimensions, the width and the height of your canvas size. I have mine set up at eight and a half by 11, typical size of a paper. You can also change if you want to work in pixels, inches, millimeters, um, or percentage. I like mine in inches, uh, and then you'll just click Create. Now say you were designing for something very specific such as an Instagram post or a Twitter header. They have these dimensions preset for you so that makes it really easy to just click it and design. There are also options for print, photo, and screen sizes. I'm going to leave mine 8.5 by 11 and click create. You'll notice a 8.5 by 11 size canvas pulled up on my screen. You also notice off to the left we've got these different tools. We've got some options here at the top and then these two boxes to the side. The first thing I'm going to do is upload a photo that I have downloaded. I'm just going to drag and drop and it appears on my canvas. As soon as I did that you'll notice that this box appeared over here. Now this section here is called the layers panel. Layers are how designers work in Photopea or Photoshop and it just organizes our design so that we can work with specific things as we go along. Uh, so right now I've got my background layer at the very bottom uh, and then I have my car photograph on the top layer. Now you can hide layers simply by clicking on this little eye or revealing it back. Now the next basic tool that I want to show you how to use is the shape tool. If you come down here and click on, you can click on rectangle, uh, circle, you can create a line. I'm just going to create a circle with the ellipse tool. To create a perfect circle, the trick is to hold the shift key while you drag and pull. All right, so there's my circle. What you can do with your shape is you can fill it. Right now I have it on no fill. You can fill it with a color. You can change the color of the stroke on the outside of the shape. Uh, you can change the size of the stroke. And things like that. Now say I want to move my shape around. The quickest way to do that is to come over here and click on the move tool. Now as soon as I put my mouse over that, you'll notice a little box appears with a move tool and then in parentheses V. Every time there is a parenthesis on any of these tools, it gives you a keyboard shortcut. That simply means that say I am selected in this shape tool over here and instead of me having to drag my mouse up to the move tool, I can simply click V and it automatically changes to that tool that I want to work with. So that's a nice keyboard shortcut. So now I can move around my shape. What you'll notice, however, is I cannot move that photo. No matter where I click, I can only move the shape. That's because I am working in this shape layer. If I want to move the photo, I have to click on the layer that I want to move. Now I can move this around. You can also rearrange the order of layers. So right now the shape layer is on the very top, that's why it's visible. But let's say I moved it down below the photograph. You can see it disappears. If I want it to come back, I can drag it back up and it'll appear, appear on the top layer. If you look above the layers panel, here's a whole history panel ready for you to show you exactly what you have done in your design. Uh, we can go as far back as to whenever I opened up this new image and I put the photograph on the page. Then you can go see exactly what you have done every step of the way. So that makes it really nice for going back and seeing uh, the steps that you've taken for the day. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the text tool. 
That's right over here with the T. You simply click on it, click somewhere on the page, and it creates, as you can see, a new text layer. Uh, you can type whatever you want. I'm just going to say text layer. If you want to move it, you can move it around by clicking on the move tool. But let's say you wanted to change the font. Make sure you are working in the text tool. Now I can simply highlight, come up here to this drop down menu of all of these fonts. Then you can just scroll through, pick the font that you like, and use it in your design. You can also change the size of your text, with the size bar. You can change the color. You can even do a color pick. Maybe I want my color to be this orange color. It'll pull up the perfect color match to the little car on my page. Now I can click the Move tool and move it around. Okay, now let's say time's up for the day and I need to save. Saving is the most important part of every day. If you don't save and you come back the next day, uh, none of your work that you worked on all day will be saved. So make sure that you save at the end of every day. To do that, all you have to come up to is the file, and then make sure you say save as PSD. Now, whenever you save as a PSD, it will download to your computer. It will download as a PSD file. PSD simply stands for Photoshop document. That means that we can reopen it and all of our layers are still preserved. If you download it, say you say file and export as like a JPEG, or a PDF, that will compress all of your layers and save it as basically just a photograph. That means that whenever you come back the next day, you won't be able to move anything around. Maybe you didn't like the font that you wanted. It'll be stuck there forever. But if you save it as a PSD, you can come back the next day and adjust anything you want. So that makes it really nice to work with the next day.